All right, so thought as a little bonus to this set of lessons that we would do some cleanup and I'm gonna start with the canvas. I just kind of threw these pages on here, didn't really think too much about how they were organized. So let's go ahead and organize them a little bit. We've got the home page here, which has just the items list on it, which uses this item row. So I'm just gonna throw this under here. So those go together and then I'll do is move these down, move the item edit up to the top here next to it, and put these underneath maybe about this, something like that. So now they're just a little more organized and I can more easily see my project. We could add some background color to the page body also. If you go into the page body, we go background color and now to make it a little bit easier to see the pages on the screen. So now we've got a little bit nicer look and feel here. I want to make a few changes from the item detail just to clean that up a little bit. So a few things on here. There's no separation between these. There's no labels or anything that explains that this is comments. So let's reorganize that just a little bit. So I think I'll drop another heading on here and we'll just put it right in there. I'm going to call this comments and then do this as, a, as an H4 tag and go ahead and look at what that looks like. So you know, I got the H2 tag up here, which is bigger and then the H4 tag is going to automatically make that smaller. And I think what I'm going to do is move this comments, adding a comment underneath so that the comments get added above it instead of below it. So let's go in here. We'll put the grid list above instead of below. And then let's go take a look at it in the preview again. So let's close that and reopen it so we can see those comments. So that's a little better. I think I might indent it, each of these things a little bit too, just to kind of like shift them in and have obvious delineation there. I'm not really going to try to do this in like a major way, but let's go just like 2 a.m. all the way around. Let me take a little off the top, something like that. So it's a little bit in. Oh, I don't want this one indented. So let's move it out. Right. So now it's out on its own thing. And then this one will indent as well. One thing I can do. If I copy this div, I can paste just the styling, so paste just the styling there. Same thing here, paste just the styling. So now all of those are indented. And then let's duplicate this comments. Heading, we'll move the duplicated one here in between. And we'll change that to tags. So now we can see we have the main item, the item name, comments and the tags it's probably too much of an indent here so let's make a few more changes to that Let me load it back up again with comments already in it yeah it still looks terrible but you kind of get the idea start working around on this you can figure out how you want it to look and feel here so we'll go maybe go back one like that and go down there as well and i'm just going to copy this again and paste the styling on that one. Paste the styling on this one as well. Let's see what that looks like. That's a little better. Let's close this. Reopen it. At least now we can see those are comments and these are tags, right? Let's go ahead and move the close button. Put it up here in the top right. We're going to just use some basic styling here. Do position, absolute top and we'll just do let's just do pixels let's go 10 pixels and then right 10 pixels so now our button is up here it's probably not enough let's make that a little more because let's actually remove it and then use ems to do it because that's what we were doing the padding in so we want it to be about the same maybe two ems either way there we go. So now the close is up here in the top right. Cool. And then looks like here, 
just going to add margin top zero. Then I'll move that up. So now item name is up here because it already has some padding around it from the outer container. So it just makes it a little more conforming to that corner, but it's preference. I'm not sure that I like this at all anymore, but I'm just going to leave it as is. I think everyone kind of understands the organizational structure there. I think it's probably enough for the demo. That's kind of how I would approach this. I just sort of like go through it. I'm, I'm usually going back and forth. A lot of times I'll actually split this out and do something like write a third and then make the other screen left two thirds. If you have a big enough screen, you can do this. And then what's nice about that is I can actually make these changes and see them, right? So if I do something like this, they'll, it'll update over here in real time. So I don't have to like go back and forth between the preview. I can actually just do it directly and see it. I also do this a good bit with mobile. So I'll have it open on my phone as well, sitting next to my desk and I can, I can see it and it's updating in real time. So it's a really good way to build because you don't have to wait for those changes. All right, back in the studio, we've got the canvas a little more organized. We've got the item organized. Let's add a delete button to this as well. Let's do it on the row here and we'll make it appear when you mouse enter into it. So let's put a div on here, an outer container. And then we're going to put the item name inside of it. And then let's put a button in here. I'm not going to do too much styling on this. We're just going to make it so you can see how to do it and you can style it all up. So let's do a row outer as the name of the style class and then do display flex and justify content start and then align items be the center and it'll make it centered there. And then maybe instead of start, since there's only two of them, if I use this option, which is space between, it'll shift that over. And so now we have this button on each row that we can make do something. But first, before I make it do anything, let's go in here and just do display none by default. I'll go ahead and change the display type to delete. So now by default, it's not going to show. But what we're going to do is on the outer container event on the mouse enter, we're going to do a new flow that is button show. And we can use the action called element show to select that button. And then back on the container, we'll go new flow, but hot on mouse lead and hide completely action and just choose that button. So now when I mouse in, I can see the, that particular one is there. Let's close this and go to the styling on the container and let's go margin bottom, say 0.5 EMs and background color. And we're just going to do this because like a really light gray or something. Don't need to be too particular here. And then on the hover state, do the background color, another light gray, but just a little darker than that one. So now whenever we hover over it, a little bit of an effect there, All right? And now that we have a background color, we need to add some padding as well. Let's go back here, padding. And Let's do, we just need left and right padding. So let's go with EMs, 1 EM and right 1 EM as well. All right, so that's looking better. We have that, we can see where we're at in it. I'm also going to go to the button class to actually do this everywhere. Put cursor pointer on it because it doesn't necessarily do that by default. Depends on the browser, I think. Some browsers do and some don't, but at least this way we have that there. Okay. So now we want on 
the delete button on click. We're just going to have a flow called delete and we're going to use delete permanently. And the collection we're deleting is items, All right? So now let's refresh. So we get the item names back in here. We've got item nine. Now, one thing to note here, the click is still on the item name, not out here. So if I click out here, it's not going to do anything. If I click here, it'll open it. So let's change that as well. I'm going to remove the open edit page from the item name. And instead we're going to put that on the div. Okay. So now we'll refresh again so that these fill up and now anywhere I click, we'll do it. One more thing I need to do here was that we don't have the cursor changing to a pointer on this. So we're going to go ahead and do that as well on the div item row outer cursor and pointer. All right. So now anywhere I click on here, it'll open the one I select. One thing I like to do as well is on, I usually like it if I click in this space over here, I want it to close that light box, right? So I'll leave the close button, but if I make a change, if I make a click here, I would like for it to also close it. Let's go ahead and set that up. And it's pretty straightforward back on the home page. We need to go to the outer and on the events on click of that outer light box hide. Okay. And then I'm going to show you one issue with doing that. So now if I click over here, perfect. We're opening and closing, but if I click here. Notice it closes. So if I click here, I'm clicking on the inner, but it closes it because there's a thing called stop propagation where it's going to automatically click through that container. If there's no event set on the inner container, it's going to click through it and click the, the container that's behind it. So we need to set an event on this inner. The easiest way to do that is in the events, just go on click and make a flow to call it like do nothing. And now with that set, when I click on this, now I can click any here and here. It's not going to do anything, but if I click anywhere over here, I'm going to run that flow. So two parts to that on the right panel, just say on click, do this. And then on the inner, do nothing, I'll click. And now I can open and close. I can use, still use the close button if I want to, or I can click here to close it. All right. So now let's delete item number nine. So. One thing we should do probably, I, I didn't tell it to refresh this list. So let's make that a little more optimized refresh. If you remember the new item, what it does is it runs the page binding for the entire page, but I want to do something a little different. I want to make an action that just refreshes this list. So that way, if there's other things that get have data binding on it, it's not going to run all those things. So for instance, if you remember. Inside of here, we're using that all over the place. If I hit add comment, it goes and runs the, the general page binding, which tries to update this. It sets the value into this, it sets the comments and it sets the tags. So it's doing a lot of extra work that it doesn't really need to be doing. So what I'll usually do is make what I call a refresh flow on that page. So let's go here and we're going to do a new flow called refresh. This is on the home page. And actually let's call it refresh items list. So this is specifically just to refresh the items list. Let's add an action here. And what I'm going to use is a set value action. So this is going to set the value of the grid list. It's going to be a really similar setup. This is actually an alternative way you can set values instead of using the page binding. So if you remember on the grid, I have the page binding or the data binding set up to come from items sorted by item name, getting all the fields. What we're going to do is create a flow that does that as well here. So I'm going to do set the element grid list from the items. We're going to get all the fields. We're going to sort it by the item name. So now when I delete this, it removes it automatically and it's using that new setup. So let's go do the same optimizations to this as well. So we're going to create a refresh for the comments list. 
refresh for the tags list, and then it will nest those two refresh flows inside of the ads and deletes. So over here, we're going to go to flows and I'm going to do one called refresh tags. And sometimes I'll go do this. I I'll go like in here just cause it's faster. I can copy this since I'm going to use it again over here, refresh tags, we'll paste that, select the grid list of tags here and change this to relationship items, tags, get all fields. And remember if, if we go look at the way that tags are done, they're filtered. So we have to re replicate this exact filtering item ID from the current field value item ID. So we've got to replicate that exact thing. So we're going to refresh the tags, but we're going to add a filter where we filter the item ID from the current record field value items ID. Okay. And then I'm going to duplicate this and change that to comments, change the grid list out to the other one. And one thing we didn't do also, I usually name these. So this is the comments grid list. And then this is the tags grid list. So when you're doing these flows like this and you're trying to target things, it makes it much easier to see that you've got the right element here. So refresh comments now says grid list comments in the selection. All right. So now we're going to do comments and notice it, it clears that out because you have to reset, like, do I want all the fields or what do I want? So let's change this to filter by item ID again current record field value items ID. Okay. So now we've got these two new flows that refresh the tags and refresh the comments. Now we need to go change what happens here. So when I do a new comment, instead of nesting the page binding, we're going to nest the refresh comments in here. So I'll remove that, put the weight back in. Then we're going to do add tag and actually let's change the name there so that they match and then nest the refresh tags or remove that. So now I've got it a little more efficient. Now what's cool about this too, I can also go in and remove the binding. So I'm going to remove the binding on the elements. So rather than using the element binding here to set the data, I'm just going to remove all that. And inside of the page binding flow, I'm going to nest my refresh comments and my refresh tags. So the cool thing about this is now we're using the bindings. To, we're still using that to set the data of the field and to set the data of this, but we're not using the built-in data bindings to set these things. And the reason that's cool is because when you change this, remember we set change the item name. It's still going to run the page binding. So we don't want it going and doing the extra work of the comments and all those things, right? Now it's only going to do these two, because those are the only things with data bound to them. Whereas whenever we add a comment or when we remove a tag, which add a tag or remove a tag, which we need to make sure that that's set up, run flow on page. So this is setting the item edit page binding. We need to change this one also to refresh tags only. So now when we click that to do remove the tag, it's going to only refresh the tags on the page and not try to do all the other data binding. So it's just much more efficient that way. And then one other thing we need to do is remove this from here, go into the page binding and nest in my refresh. So now all my grids are getting refreshed by these flows instead of by the built-in page binding that comes from the data tab on those grid lists. Now there is one other piece that I think would be kind of cool to do right now, when you delete an item, that's only deleting the item. But remember if I have a bunch of comments for that item and a bunch of tag relationships for that item, we really want to delete those relationships too. So inside of this delete flow, we have the permanently delete record action, but what we need to add to this is first deleting the comments and also the tags that are related to this item record. So the action that we're going to use is also called delete. You'll see this action called data delete records. So let's add one of those actions. 
I'm going to drag this to the top because I want it to do that first. Let's change this to say comments. And then we're going to first select our collection, which is just the comments collection. I'm just going to choose all fields. And then the key thing here is that we're going to filter this. So whatever records are found in this request are going to be deleted permanently. So we want to make sure we filter this properly because we don't want to delete everything, right? Let's go ahead and filter using the item ID of the comment only where the current item ID matches. So the same type of filtering we've been doing, this is going to find comments where the item ID of the comment matches the current item ID. And then I'll duplicate this, drag that up so that we do it in the right order. We'll change this to be label tags. We'll change the data collection to the relationships. We're wanting to delete the relationship records, not the tags themselves. So let's select relationship item tags. Change that to get all fields again. Add our filter, same thing. Item ID of the relationship using the current record field value, items ID. So this is going to delete permanently all of the relationship item tags records where the item ID of those relationships match the current item ID. So this is gonna now run three things. We're going to delete the comments, then we're going to delete the tags, and then we're going to delete the item itself. Okay, so now let's go check out the preview on this. And one thing you can do too, if you open debug, which if you're on a Mac, you can do command option I, you can also get to that through the developer tools in Chrome or Brave or whatever browser you're doing. And what I'm going to do is go to the network tab here. Now, if I click this delete button prior to making those changes, we would only see one request to the network, but we're going to see three here. So I'm going to click delete and we see three different ones. So this one was deleting the comments. This one was deleting the tags. And then this one deleted the item. And so now we have all of the related records of the item deleted at the same time that we deleted the item itself. All right, so that concludes this set of lessons. In this series, you have created items, created an edit screen for those items that open into a light box, created the ability to edit the item name, to add comments to an item, which is a one-to-many relationship. So you have one item and many comments. And we've also created the ability to add tags, which is a many-to-many -many relationship where you have many tags related to many items. And then we created the ability to delete those items and styled everything to make it a little bit cleaner. Thank you so much for joining us for this course. Looking forward to seeing you at the next one.